Good morning, keto people. This is a broadcast for the Keto Lifestyle Group for Busy People and Travelers. And what I wanted to talk to you about today is when you're going to a holiday party or a family function or someplace where you're gonna be, where they're gonna be making food for you, what to do to plan ahead so that you don't ruin your keto plans, right? So I'm Dr. Annette. If you haven't met me yet, I love to help people just like you feel great and have the energy to do the things they love to do with the people they love to do it with. And I'm a huge keto advocate and love to help people um, have their best life, right? So um, what do you do when you're going to a holiday party or any party for that matter and you don't know what's going to be provided or if there's gonna be anything there you can eat, especially if there's a lot of people bringing a covered dish that can make a complicated and troublesome uh, situation for someone who, like me, has food sensitivities as well as follows a keto lifestyle. And um, these are the tips and tricks that I use. I bring a dish of something that I know that I can eat. Typically, I bring something that I know that my little family group can eat because all of my grandchildren are also gluten sensitive. My daughter's gluten sensitive and my husband is as well. So I always bring something that all of us like and can eat just in case there's nothing there that we can trust to eat with our food situation. And I always make sure that it's keto friendly and something we can share with others as well. But if nothing else, we at least don't go hungry at the event. Also, um, if it's gonna be an event where people are gonna be having dessert, I typically will bring a covered dish for something that we can at least eat meal-wise, something that's high in fat and low in carbs, but then I'll also bring a keto-friendly dessert because nothing's worse than sitting around watching everyone eat a whole bunch of pie or cake and not having something that you can have yourself. That is no fun at all. <laughs> so I usually try to bring um, some sort of main dish or a main side dish that will hold us over until we get our dessert and that the dessert will be something we can share with others and also be keto friendly and avoid all of our food sensitivities. So that's always something that works out well. And um, most people don't mind if you bring a, a, a covered dish anyway. And most events these days, it's pretty much customary to bring some sort of covered dish. So if you're going into a holiday party, if you're gonna be hanging out with friends and family, don't be afraid to at least offer to bring something. Um, that was tip number one. Tip number two is let the host know of whatever party, whatever type of party it is you're going to, that you do have some food specifications and requirements, but you're happy to bring something to accommodate yourself or your family so that they don't feel like they have to change their entire menu to suit your needs. Because there's gonna be a lot of people there and you know maybe those people aren't gonna be too open to something like that. Or maybe the host is having a party and she loves to make a certain dish and she doesn't wanna not be able to do her favorite dish because you're coming. So just make sure you have a conversation with the person, the host or the hostess of the party that you're going to so that you guys can communicate and make sure that she feels comfortable that you're gonna be satisfied with what you have even if you have to bring something yourself. Number three, always eat something before you go to the party. A lot of times, especially around holidays, you get up in the morning, you're running around, you have an hour, maybe a two hour drive to get to a family function and you skip breakfast because you're in a hurry and you're not really wanting to be on the road, um, running late, whatever. And this is the mistake that a lot of people make on holiday functions because they know there's gonna be a lot of food at the party that they go to. So they skip breakfast and what happens is they get to the holiday party and then the meal is maybe a half an hour, an hour, two hours later than they thought it was gonna be. And by the time the meal is served, they are totally starving. They eat foods that they shouldn't eat because they just have no, woo, no brains left, right? So if you eat a little bit of something that's high fat and very keto friendly, before you leave your house, you're gonna be less likely to be um, succumbing to those holiday treats that everybody's gonna have laying around and you'll be less likely to make poor decisions. So plan ahead, set yourself some rules, let yourself, give yourself some guidelines that you plan to follow 
so that when you get there, you have a plan of action and you know what you're going to allow yourself to have and what you're not going to allow yourself to have and do your best to stick to that. And tip number four, it's one day. It's not going to ruin the rest of your life unless you have some sort of health issue that's keeping you from being able to eat something like food sensitivities, diabetes, something that gives you really, really strict outlines, guidelines, whatever. It's one day. If you're going to do something, enjoy yourself, have fun. If you're going to eat some carbs, eat some carbs. Try to keep it within reason. And remember, it's only one day out of your life. And if you do cheat, you're going to have to pay the price, right? There is a price for cheating. And if you, if you cheat, you have to be prepared to deal with the ramifications of that. And a lot of times those ramifications are symptoms of the keto flu, constipation, diarrhea, upset stomach, headache, those kinds of things. If you're willing to pay the price to eat those foods, then you have to choose your own battles. I just recommend that you choose your battles wisely and try to avoid those kinds of things because a day, one day can be a week, two week, a whole month setback for some people. Other people move in and out of ketosis rather easily. They don't struggle. You can do a, a bad cheat day one day and the next day be right back in ketosis. If that's you, bless you. I'm so happy for you, but most people are not gonna be that fortunate, right? So if you're gonna cheat, remember, pick your battles wisely. Choose things that you know are not gonna upset your apple cart for weeks on end, right? If I eat gluten, it's a whole month to six week sentence of exhaustion, problems, you know, health issues I get. My face breaks out. I can always tell when I've been what I call glutened um, by accident because I'd never eat it on purpose. And occasionally I'll get a hold of something that I don't realize has gluten in it. Hey Sherry, I see you there. Um, so remember, it's one day. Pick your battles wisely and make sure that you have stuff in place to get over the hump if you do end up in trouble because of something you did after a holiday party. Um, this includes alcohol, this includes foods you shouldn't eat, foods that you might be sensitive to or allergic to, and just basically falling off the keto bandwagon. Because if you fall off the keto wagon and you don't have something like, like what I do, my exogenous ketones to get you back on track, you're going to suffer for I don't know what amount of time, but you're gonna be sorry that you fell off the wagon. So if you need some support, if you'd like to get some of these so that you know that you're gonna be okay the next day, let me know. I'm happy to help you out. I also have in my store, you can buy one, five, or 10 of these to uh, help you get over the hump after the holidays. Um, or you can choose to, to purchase an entire box to get you through for a 20 day cycle, maybe between Thanksgiving and Christmas to keep you from gaining those extra holiday pounds. I'm happy to help you with that, walk you through the steps. Personally, my husband and I are doing a reboot, which is a 60 hour fast that's guided by um, ketones this week, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, because we have a trip back home this Friday, and guess what? I'm sure we're gonna be exposed to a lot of those things that we're not supposed to have, and we wanna make sure that we are in our tip-top condition when we get there. So if you have any questions, just drop them below. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. And remember, it's about family, it's about tradition. Getting to those parties, enjoying yourself, spending time with friends and family is amazing reason for this holiday season, but don't derail yourself completely and choose your battles wisely. If you're new to this broadcast, please go back to the beginning and watch. There's lots of good tips and tricks in here. And thank you, thank you for being a part of this community. I appreciate every single one of you, and I am here to help. I'm Dr. Annette. Thanks again. I hope you have a great day.